Hey there, and welcome to our channel where we dive deep into the science of healthy aging past 40, where we believe knowledge is power, and our goal is to empower all of our subscribers. So please hit the subscribe button, and if you find this helpful, share and comment on any potential topics you'd like for us to add in the future. Today's topic is something that many women have asked me about, so we're going to spend a good 30 minutes on it. It's going to be intense and we're going to be getting really sciency, like a grade 10 chemistry class. But so many women have struggled with menopause belly fat that, that I know is going to help many folks. We're going to start with the science behind menopause, what it is, what's going on in the body, the chemistry and the changes in our composition, the different stages of menopause and what causes it, perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. Then we'll talk about symptoms. A few of these you might recognize if you're going through menopause yourself. Then we'll go into detail about why it's so important to pay attention to meno belly and why it's different than other fats in the body. We'll talk about the three critical health points that you must look out for as a woman suffering from meno belly fat. Lastly, we'll give you seven key different strategies that you can implement today to start trimming away your menopause belly fat. And no, it's got nothing to do with starving yourself and doing a million burpees. So, are you ready? Grab some coffee, get cuddled up beside your puppy, and let's go. So first, what is menopause? Menopause is not a new word, especially for women. It's something that happens to women usually around their late 40s or early 50s. It's a natural process that marks the end of a woman's menstrual cycle meaning you will no longer have periods. Now, during menopause, the body goes through a lot of changes. One of the most common symptoms is hot flashes, which are like sudden waves of heat that can make you feel sweaty and uncomfortable. Women might also experience mood swings, trouble sleeping, vaginal dryness, joint pains, and low energy levels. But one of the biggest concerns for many women during menopause is weight gain particularly belly fat. That's because the hormonal changes that happen during menopause can cause the body to store more fat around the midsection. Now, have you ever wondered if menopause just happens right away? Or does it come up slowly in stages? And the answer is stages. In fact, there are three stages of menopause. And as women, we all go through this natural process at some point in our lives. And I know that it can feel confusing and overwhelming, but don't worry though, I'm here to break it down for you in a fun and friendly way. So let's start with the first stage of menopause, perimenopause. When your hormones start to change, and this is when your ovaries start to produce less estrogen, which can lead to irregular periods and other symptoms, perimenopause can start in your 30s or 40s, but for most women, it starts in their mid to late 40s. During perimenopause, you may experience a wide range of symptoms. Some of the most common ones include hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, and trouble sleeping. You may also notice changes in your menstrual cycle, like heavier or lighter periods, or periods that last longer or shorter than usual. The next stage of menopause is called menopause. This is when you haven't had a period for 12 consecutive months. For most women, this happens in their early 50s, but it can happen earlier or later than that. Once you reach menopause, you may still experience some of the same symptoms as during perimenopause, but they may become less frequent and intense. You may also notice other changes, like vaginal dryness or a decrease in libido, as well as low energy levels. The final stage of menopause is postmenopause. This is the stage that starts after you've gone 12 months without a period. During postmenopause, your hormone levels have stabilized and your body has adjusted to the changes. While postmenopause can be a relief from the symptoms of menopause, it's important to remember that your risk for certain health conditions, like osteoporosis and heart disease, increases during this time. Now let's talk about the symptoms associated with menopause. When you look at the symptoms of menopause, it's easy to understand why it can be an uncomfortable time for many women. Some of the most common signs are hot flashes, sore joints, insomnia, moodiness, and weight gain. 
which is the most concerning symptom for many women, especially the increase in abdominal fat, or what's known as the meno belly. People might call it different names, like muffin top or monopot, but they all mean the same thing, increased abdominal or belly fat during menopause. And not wanting to have belly fat is not just about looking good either. Studies have found that people with too much fat around their stomachs are more likely to get sick. These diseases include heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Now, let's dive even deeper into the hormonal changes that can cause women to gain belly fat during menopause, aka the science behind menobelly simply explained. As mentioned earlier, the decrease in estrogen levels during menopause can cause changes in body composition, including an increase in belly fat. Estrogen is a hormone that helps regulate metabolism and body weight. As levels decline, women may experience a decrease in energy expenditure and an increase in appetite, leading to weight gain. Another hormone that can play a role in belly fat gain during menopause is insulin. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood sugar levels. When insulin levels are imbalanced or not processed properly, called insulin insensitivity, such as during menopause, it can lead to weight gain and an increase in belly fat. But first, let's discuss insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas that helps to regulate blood sugar. Insulin sensitivity is when your body responds better to insulin, meaning that it can absorb more glucose, our blood sugar, into the cells, and less of it builds up in the blood. The more sensitive your body is to insulin, the lower your risk of developing diseases like diabetes and heart disease. In addition to estrogen and insulin, other hormones also play a role in where weight is stored in the body. For example, cortisol, also known as the stress hormone, can cause fat to be stored in the belly area. Cortisol levels can increase during menopause due to stress, lack of sleep, or other factors, leading to more belly fat. Furthermore, some hormones, such as adiponectin, can help regulate where fat is stored in the body. Adiponectin levels tend to decrease during menopause, which can lead to an increase in visceral fat, a type of fat that surrounds the organs and can contribute to health issues such as insulin resistance and cardiovascular disease. As you probably already know, hormones play a role in signaling to the brain when to eat and when to stop. Leptin, a hormone produced by fat cells, helps regulate appetite and signals to the brain when you are full. During menopause, leptin levels can decrease, leading to an increase in appetite and potential overeating. Now that you know why meno belly fat happens, let's talk about why as women over 40, we have to be extra careful and pay close attention to meno belly fat. Why pay attention to meno belly? Meno belly is more than skin deep and certainly does more than make it hard to zip up your jeans. As we said a while ago, it can lead to other medical issues, like heart disease and diabetes. How could extra fat in the body do that? The problem with belly fat is that it's not limited to the additional layer located just below the skin. What do we mean by that? Here's what you should know. There are two types of fats, one called subcutaneous and the other visceral. Subcutaneous fat is the extra layer located just below the skin. Visceral fat lies very deep within, inside the abdomen and the surrounding internal organs. Although subcutaneous fat can make people concerned about their appearance, visceral fat is linked with much more dangerous health problems. These include abnormal cholesterol levels in the blood, breathing problems, heart disease, diabetes type 2, hypertension, or chronic high blood pressure. That's why, if you're past 40, it's important for you to pay special attention to diets and lifestyles and make sure you're getting proper nutrition so that you don't have extra calories, as it could lead to an increase in abdominal fat. Now that we understand what causes menopause and why it's important to pay attention to menobelly, let's look at how we can address this issue. What can you do about menobelly? While menopause is a natural process, there are some things that you can do to avoid or reduce the amount of fat you could gain during menopause. You can start by making sure you are, one, eating a healthy, well-balanced diet. 
Eating right means having the right balance of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Eating plenty of fresh fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can provide the nutrients you need without overloading your body with calories. Two, make sure you get probiotics from fermented or pickled foods. The human gut is home to hundreds of different microorganisms. Most of these bacteria are friendly and produce a range of essential nutrients. Some bacteria in the gut can help break down dietary fiber, which your body cannot digest on its own. That's where probiotics come in. Probiotics are beneficial bacteria that you can get by eating fermented or pickled foods or supplements. They help to restore the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, which can help improve digestion and absorption of nutrients. Examples of fermented foods rich in probiotics include yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, my favorite, kombucha, tempeh, miso, and pickles. You don't have to eat all of them every day, but if you can find a way to include them in your diet, they could help. If you can't, a great probiotic supplement with different bacteria strains can help. See number seven in about five minutes for more details. Three, get enough vitamin D. Vitamin D plays a role in regulating insulin and hormone levels and metabolism. Research suggests that women with low vitamin D levels may be more prone to belly fat gain during menopause. By getting enough vitamin D through sunlight, supplements, or food sources, women can help support healthy metabolism and potentially reduce belly fat. 4. Exercise regularly. Resistance training. Exercise, specifically resistance training, will help you maintain a healthy weight and keep your muscles toned. It allows the body to use energy efficiently, meaning that fewer calories are stored as fat. It also helps to prevent the loss of muscle mass that often comes with age. Studies have found that exercising regularly can reduce abdominal fat and improve insulin sensitivity. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate-intensity physical activity per day, three times a week. I'll include a free 30-minute resistance workout program you can do right from home below. 4. Help your body regulate cortisol levels, lower stress. Cortisol is a hormone that is released during times of stress. The adrenal glands located in the kidneys produce cortisol when we are stressed. When cortisol is released, it increases the production of fat cells in some areas of the body, including the abdomen. It can also increase your appetite, making you eat more and more than usual and crave sweet and fatty foods. It can also make it harder for your body to burn fat efficiently. If these happen, you will gain more weight and fat deposits around the abdomen. Even if you try hard to avoid getting hungry, it'll be challenging because when this hormone is high, it'll be harder to stop cravings for unhealthy foods. So be sure to help your body regulate the levels of cortisol in your blood. You can do this by avoiding stress and finding ways to relax. You could take time to read a book if it makes you happy, hang out with your friends or family, take a stroll in the park when the weather is nice, or practice yoga and meditation. 5. Try some yoga or meditation. Practicing meditation, yoga, or deep breathing exercises can help you de-stress and regulate cortisol levels in the body. Besides that, these activities can help you get more in touch with your body and stay mindful of what you eat. When you free your mind from stress, it can be easier for you to make healthier food choices. You'll also be able to be more aware of how your body is feeling and know when you are full without overeating. 6. Get adequate sleep. This should be number one or two, as it's one of the most important things you can do. Sleep plays an essential role in maintaining a healthy weight and overall health. Getting enough sleep is vital for many bodily functions, including the regulation of hormones. It helps to keep your hormones, such as cortisol levels, in check. When you don't get enough sleep, it can lead to an increase in cortisol and the production of hunger hormones that can cause unhealthy cravings. Furthermore, studies have shown that lack of sleep can increase the production of hunger hormones, leading to overeating which could contribute to gaining belly fat during menopause. So aim for at least seven to eight hours of quality sleep 
every night. Getting adequate rest can help keep those hormone levels balanced. My pre-bed ritual is as follows. No blue light, so no phones, laptop, or TV, 30 minutes before bed. Make sure the room I'm sleeping in is cold, around 68 degrees. Turn my phone to airplane mode so there are zero distractions. Wear earplugs if the room isn't quiet. Make sure all lights are off and the room should be as dark as possible. Get blackout curtains if you can. Take a supplement with some specific herbs that can help you sleep better. See blog link under the video to get more details about this. 7. Consider taking probiotic supplements. What else can you do to get rid of your belly fat? Do you need to eat fermented or pickled foods daily? What if you don't like its taste or don't have time to source it? If that's the case, consider taking probiotic supplements. Probiotic supplements are capsules or tablets containing beneficial bacteria that can be taken orally. They help to restore the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, which can help improve digestion and absorption of nutrients. If you don't keep the good and bad bacteria in your gut balanced, it can affect how well your gut digests and absorbs nutrients. Once digestion and absorption of nutrients are impaired, it can lead to an increase in abdominal fat. Some probiotic supplements available on the market help replenish your gut with good bacteria, which helps balance out digestion and absorption and reduces fat storage in the body. As a matter of fact, one study shows that taking probiotic supplements can help to reduce visceral fat. In the study, probiotic supplementation was associated with a significant reduction in visceral adipose tissue, also known as hidden fat stored deep inside the belly and wrapped around the organs. There are a few examples of good bacteria in the gut, L. acidophilus, L. salivarius, and L. plantarum. Fat storage and breakdown seem to be related to these three species of bacteria. L. acidophilus promotes the growth of good bacteria in the body and gut, reducing inflammation. L. salivarius helps to break down fat for energy and can help reduce visceral fat and keep your gut healthy by fighting off harmful bacteria, which is important for weight management. And finally, L. plantarum produces a fatty acid probiotic that triggers good bacteria, maintaining the balance of the bacteria in your gut and the fat-burning properties, which will help increase the efficiency of digestion. Finding the right probiotic supplement is easy. I myself have a favorite probiotic supplement that has everything I need for my gut. It not only has one, but all three good bacteria we previously mentioned to keep the balance of our gut community healthy. If you're interested in the supplement I'm taking, check the link in the video description below. And remember, there's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to menopause and belly fat, but there are some steps we can take to minimize the impact it has on our lives. By eating right, getting enough sleep, practicing mindful and stress-relieving techniques, and taking probiotic supplements, we can help to reduce the effects of menopause on our bodies. So don't let MenoBelly take control of your life. Take it back with a few simple steps. So if you're struggling with belly fat, don't just give up. There's always something you can do about it. Start by incorporating fermented foods into your diet and add probiotic supplements to restore the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut. By following these steps, you can be sure to minimize MenoBelly as much as possible and improve your overall health during menopause. Thanks for watching, and remember, do what you love and stay healthy and happy. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. See you in the next video. Goodbye.